Hello and welcome to this video about new features in Lightroom 2023 for both Lightroom Classic, which is now at version 12, and Lightroom CC, which is now at version 6. Uh, this video is part of a, a short series, three videos uh, about using these new tools and the, the new interface. This video will be about using the, the radial mask, the graduated mask, as well as an additional feature showing how to do selective color and use that creatively in an edit with the brush tool. As I mentioned, there are two other videos in this series and I will leave links to those in the description below. So let's get started with some edits uh, on some photos uh, using the radial filter, the graduated filter, and the uh, brush uh, mask to make some edits. So here we go. So what I wanna do in this edit is to select just the subject's face and make everything else around it a little bit darker. So to do that, I'm gonna use the radial filter and that's inside the mask panel. So I'm gonna click on the mask tool to show the options here. And for this one, I'm gonna come down to the radial gradient. I'm gonna click that once. And now I have the radial gradient editing tools available. And here's how this works. So a, a radial filter means it's round. So it's gonna be a oval or circular shape, anything in between as I defined. And the way you use this is to start in the middle of the shape or area you want to draw and click and hold and then expand outward. So I'm gonna click in the middle of Paul's face here, which is about the middle of his nose, click, hold, and drag. And again, in red, it's showing the mask area that I'm creating, which is uh, around his head. There are two circles here, two ovals, and the inner one is will be 100% of the effect I'm going to do, and then the outer one is the soft edge or the graduated diminishing of that effect. I can change that feather here with the feather tool. I can make it bigger, up to 100 or zero feather, there, which is not what I want because then I could see the mask. You want this to be invisible. So for this photo, the mask of around 25 to 30 will work well. So as I mentioned, what I want to do is actually have this happen, the change to take place, not on his face, but everywhere else. So right now I've defined his face as the mask area in red, and I want to invert that. I want to do the opposite. So the way to do that is up here at the top of the radial gradient, there's an option to invert. Click on that and now you'll see everything but his face is red. That means wherever you want to make these changes in the panel down here will be affected in the red area but not the clear area. So I'm going to make everything a little darker. So I'll take the exposure a little negative. Also I'm going to make everything a little softer there. So I'm gonna do a little negative texture, a little negative sharpness, just to bring a little more attention to his face and a little less attention down here. So uh, I've done that now quickly and easily. His face is brighter than the rest of the photo, which is what I really, really wanted. So simple and easy with the radial filter to define an area. And in this case, I inverted that area. If I wanna make a change to the radial filter, if it was the wrong size or shape, I can just click on it again and adjust in or out. And you notice it will adjust both sides. Or if I need to move up or down, I can do that. I can also click in the middle and move it to a different location, but I wanna leave it there. So we'll go ahead and leave it. Also gonna do a radial filter edit here, as well as a graduated filter edit on this photo uh, in two separate places. So first we'll start with the radial filter. So I'm still in the mask panel. I'm gonna click on the radial filter. And again, I'm gonna click uh, in the middle here. And what I wanna do is brighten her face just a little bit. So I'm gonna click, hold, drag, and adjust that to the size I like and just move it to be in position and maybe just a little size adjustment of that again. Also, her head's tilted a little bit, so I'm gonna tilt this uh, filter. Uh, I, the way you tilt a filter is on the outcome outside of the outer circle, and just click and hold, and you can rotate this either direction. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the left, and now uh, we have that matching the angle of her head. I know it's uh, spilling over a little bit into her hair, that's okay. Uh, for what the edit I'm gonna do here, uh, it's not gonna affect your hair too much. Basically what I'm doing is just a little extra exposure. So just a little extra exposure. 
and then a little extra i'm going to open the shadows just a little bit to brighten up her face just a little bit more not a lot just a little little bit the next thing i want to do in this photo is to darken this area in the top left because it's very distracting it's so bright over there and to do that quickly what i'm going to do is use a graduated filter the way a graduated filter works is you draw an area and define where you want the filter to fade or gradually go out and no longer have effect so to start to do that when I, i'm already have the mask panel open so i click on create new mask this time i want the linear gradient so i'm going to click on that and the way a linear gradient works is you start in the direction you want the filter to have the most effect. So that's the top left here for me. I'm gonna click and hold and drag. And in red, it's showing where the filter is taking effect and uh, where it's gradually fading out or graduating away. So uh, something like that looks about good. If I ever, if I need to change it, I can move it around. I can also change the uh, spread of the graduation by clicking on either one of the end lines and showing uh, increasing or decreasing the graduation. Uh, so once I have it in place I like, I will just again adjust exposure, a little bit negative there. Uh, I'm gonna adjust the whites, the brightest parts of the photo and the highlights, turn those down as well. Also the shadows, I'll darken those just a little bit. So basically I'm just trying to pull attention away from this bright area and bring it back to her face. Uh, the face is brightened with a radial filter and that corner is darkened with a linear gradient filter. Next up, I want to use this photo to show how to use a graduated filter and have it just apply to one area of the photo, in this case, the sky. So with my mask panel open, I'm going to choose my linear gradient. I'm going to click here and just, again, start at the top because that's where I want things to start. And then I want them to end down at the bottom. And the reason I'm using a linear gradient is because skies are often uh, darker at the top and a little brighter at the bottom. So I want to reflect that in my filter and I don't want it to affect any of the mountains though. So once I have my linear gradient in place, what I need to do is make the adjustment I want. So in this case, I want to make it just a little darker in the sky, add some dehaze to bring out more detail in that. And that's about the look I want. However, it is affecting just a little bit here, the, the top of the mountains and down here in this little bit of down in the valley as well. And I don't want that. So what I wanna do is intersect this gradient, have it only apply to the sky, which rhymes and I didn't mean that, sorry. So here's how you do that. I'm gonna come back into the mask panel and then click on the three dots to the right of the word mask one. And what I want to do is intersect mask with select sky. Click on that. It's going to do some math. And now the linear gradient, which is here, only is affecting the sky. And you can see that because if I drag this down, it will not affect any of the stuff at the bottom of the photo, even though the mask is all the way down there. It's affecting that. If I drag it up, it will, you can see how it moves. Let's make it more dramatic so you can see it even more. Let's just go really dark. So if I drag this, you can see where it's affecting. And if I pull it down, you can see where it's no longer affecting anything, which is the mountains and the canyon down here. So this is really powerful to combine uh, intersecting one filter with another smart object that has been selected by the software so that you're only applying the filter where you want it which is really cool really fast and uh, amazingly awesome to, a way to edit your photos in a simple and easy way without even opening photoshop so in this next edit what i'm going to do is a selective color edit which will make just one part of the photo in color and everything else black and white. Uh, that's kind of a special effect and it, it, it has its place, but I also want to use it as a way to then reduce that effect and have it be more of a normal edit to this photo. So here we go. So again, in the mask panel, I have that open and I'm going to click on the brush because what I want to do for this in three easy steps is brush uh, the area of the whole photo and then erase where I want the color to be and then that will create the contrast potential that I need in this photo. 
here's how I do that. So I'm going to start with my brush tool. This brush has some different options to it than we've seen previously. We have the size, which is what you expect it to be, how big the brush is. Then we have the feather, which is the softness of the edge. And then we have two other things, flow and density. Flow is how quickly as you press and brush, it will make the brush happen. Uh, so if it's less than 100, it means you will have to do multiple passes over the same area to get 100%. And then the density is how much of it covers what's existing there. So I, for most cases, will leave both flow and density at 100, especially in this case, I want to leave them at 100. Uh, usually when I'm painting with a brush, I, I paint the brush first and then make the change, uh, the edits that I want after the brush is in place. But for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and make the change first, the edit first, and here's the edit I want. In the mask tool panel, I want my saturation to be minus 100. So I'm gonna click and drag that over to minus 100, and notice nothing changed in the photo because I have not brushed anywhere with this mask to apply a change. So I'm gonna to go to a really big brush because this should go really quick. I'm just gonna click hold and drag and brush on the whole photo. Basically, I'm painting all the color out and making the color go away so the photo is now black and white. That's step one. Step two uh, is to just erase where I don't want this to happen, which is on this leaf. So I'm gonna click on subtract in the mask panel. And what I wanna subtract with is a brush. I'm gonna go to a smaller brush. And I want to turn on some intelligence on the brush to help me in these fine areas here. So only brush where I want it to brush. And to do that over in the mask options, the brush options, I'm going to click auto mask. So I'm going to get a tiny brush and I'm just going to go along the edges of the leaf. And you'll notice, even though I maybe miss just a little bit, it stays within the leaf because it's using some contrast detection to find the difference between the leaf and the surrounding subjects. So I'm gonna keep going around the edge. Think of this like your coloring class where I'm using small details. I'm uh, using a small brush and going slowly and somewhat carefully. And we'll speed this up now in edit. So once I'm done with the outer detail area, what I'm next gonna do is go to a larger brush. I'm gonna use my scroll wheel to make the brush larger and then turn off auto mask because that'll help this go more quickly. So I'm just gonna finish coloring back in the color to the leaf by brushing where I don't want the black and white, the mask to have effect. So this is now a selective color image and it's an obvious edit. But what it's done is set me up for being able to quickly create uh, more contrast with the leaf and the rest of the uh, objects in this photo. So where we started with this photo, you can see the leaf, but it, it's not super easy because there's, lot, there's not much contrast between the leaf and the richness of colors in the other objects in the photo. Here, it's really easy now that I've created this selective color effect, but it's, it feels like too much. So here's what I'm gonna do to not make it look like a filter, but make it look like a photo where the leaf is very obvious. And it's very simple. I'm just gonna back off the saturation from minus 100 to right around in this photo, right around minus 40. So now there's less saturation in everything else but the leaf, so re less richness of color, so the leaf pops a little more. I'm going to help that just a little bit more by decreasing the exposure there, make the other elements except for the leaf a little darker so the leaf is now brighter and more colorful so it stands out more. I have one little problem up here. I have this red, I think it's a rock up here or another leaf. So what I want to do is make that still black and white or no color. So I'm going to create a new mask on this photo and click brush and just quickly, again, minus 100 saturation first, relatively small brush, just brush right over that, any other color over there in the top left that I don't want. So now this is finished, I have more contrast, uh, so the leaf is more obvious in the photo, but it doesn't feel like it's a special effect on the photo.
even though that special effect can be kind of fun. So there you have it, a few more ways to use the new interface of the Lightroom editing panel of the masking tool in Lightroom 2023 and Lightroom Classic 2023. Hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments below and be glad to assist. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two other videos with uh, in this little series about Lightroom 2023, and those links are also below. So look forward to seeing you in another video soon. So until then, Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.